Hello my student, welcome to Darasa, where learning is made easy. You are teacher of physics today, is Purity and Zelimo. Today we are going to continue with the topic pressure, and that is pressure in solids. And we are going to look at calculation of maximum and minimum pressure. Maximum and minimum pressure, and by the end of this lesson, you should be in a position to calculate number one, maximum pressure, and number two, the minimum pressure that can be exerted. Now, again, we go back to the definition of pressure. What is pressure? We see that pressure is the force acting normally or perpendicularly per unit area. Pressure is the force acting normally per unit area and therefore pressure is given by or it's equal to force divided by area force divided by area and we can see clearly from this uh, from this formula of pressure we can see that pressure is universally proportional to the cross section area Pressure is universally proportional to the cross-section area. And what does that one mean? This means that, and in this case when we are saying that pressure is universally proportional to the cross-section area, we are holding the force constant. We hold the force constant because we say that the two factors that affect pressure in solids is the amount of force and also the cross-section area. Now, if you hold the force constant, you realize that pressure is inversely proportional to the cross-section area. And what does this mean? This means that when the cross-section area increases, the pressure reduces. And when the cross-section area reduces, the pressure increases. They are universally proportional to each other. When one increases, the other one decreases. When the area decreases, the pressure increases. Now, remember we said, and that explains so well why trucks which carry heavy loads have many wheels and broad ones. We said this is to increase the surface area or the area of contact with the ground and hence reduce the pressure exerted. Now we are going to apply this knowledge to be able to calculate minimum pressure and maximum pressure. Now let's start with minimum pressure and give the formula for calculating minimum pressure. Now we write minimum pressure, you can write this, uh, uh, it as P minimum, P for pressure, M-I-N for minimum. So pressure minimum will be given by the force, F in newtons, divided by the area largest or the largest area. If you want to get the minimum pressure, you use the largest area. So pressure minimum will be given by the force F in newtons divided by the area A, lunches, the largest area. That will give us the minimum pressure. Now, when you want to calculate the maximum pressure, in this case now we use the minimum area. And therefore, P max or P maximum will be given by as you can see here, force F in newtons divided by the area smallest or the smallest area. Now that is the difference between this minimum. If you want to get minimum pressure, you use the largest area. And you, if you want to get the largest or the greatest pressure or the maximum pressure, you use the minimum or the smallest area. And because this is because we've seen that area and pressure are universally proportional. Now let's back on a question. 
a brick 20 centimeters long, 20 centimeters long, 10 centimeters wide, and 5 centimeters thick has a mass of 0 0.5 kilograms. Here we have a brick which measures 20 centimeters by 10 centimeters by 5 centimeters and it has a mass of 0 0.5 kilograms. Determine the number one greatest pressure that can be exerted on the brick on a flat surface. Greatest pressure that can be exerted by the brick on a flat surface. Now, greatest simply means maximum or the most pressure or the greatest or the maximum pressure. Now, I want you to look at this brick. This is a brick measuring 20 centimeters by 10 centimeters by 5 centimeters and it has a mass of 0 0.5 kilograms. We have also been given that the gravitational force is 10 newtons per kilogram. The gravitational force is 10 newtons per kilogram. Now we want to start with the greatest pressure. Now before we calculate the greatest pressure, I want you to look at this brick. Now this brick can rest on the surface in three different ways. And in the first position, as you can see here, the area A1, the possible area, will be 20 times 10, 20 by 10, which is 200 square centimeters. Now, again, it can rest on this other position, whereby we are going to say that our possible area A2 is 10 by 5, which is 50 square centimeters. And finally, it can rest again on this other way, as you can see here. And therefore, our possible area, we can call it A3, will be given by 20 multiplied by 5, which is 20 multiplied by 5, which will be equal to 100 square centimeters. And therefore, we have three possible areas. 200 square centimeters was our A1, 50 square centimeters was our A2, and 100 square centimeters is our A3. Now, we want to calculate the greatest pressure. And we know that pressure greatest will be given by the force in newtons divided by the area smallest or the smallest area. In our case here, you can see clearly that our smallest area, if you compare 250 and 150, is the smallest. And therefore, we are going to use 50 square centimeters. Now, again, we'll convert the square centimeters into square meters because we want to get our pressure in its SI unit. So how many square centimeters make one square meter? 10,000 square centimeters make one square meter. What about 50 square centimeters? So when you cross multiply, as you can see here, we are going to have 550 uh, divided by 10,000, which is 0 0.005 square meters. That is the area that we are going to use. It is the minimum area. 0 0.005 square meters. Now, we need the force. We have give, been given the mass and we have been given the mass in the SI unit, that is kilograms. Now, how, what is the relationship between force and mass? In our topic in Form 1, that is on the topic force, we said that force is given by mass multiplied by gravitational force, that is F is given by m multiplied by g and therefore our mass is 0 0.5 kilograms multiplied by we have been given the value of g as 10 newtons per kilogram so what is 0 0.5 multiplied by 10 we end up getting 5 newtons 
That is our force. And remember, our minimum area is 0 0.005 square meters. Therefore, our greatest pressure will be given by force, that is 5 newtons, divided by the cross-section area, that is the smallest area, which is 0 0.005 square meters. So 5 divided by 0 0.005 square meters, you end up getting 1,000 newtons per square meters. Now that is the pressure greatest or the greatest pressure that can be exerted on this brick. And we have said that the greatest pressure will be exerted when the resting area is minimum or when the cross-section area is minimum. Now let's move on and calculate the least pressure. The least pressure or simply the minimum pressure. Now, with the minimum pressure, pressure minimum or the pressure least is being given by force F in newtons divided by the largest area. The largest area. Now, if you look at these possible areas, the three possible areas, we have 200, we have 50, and we have 100. The largest is 200 square centimeters. So for us to get the least pressure, we are going to use the largest area, which is 200 square centimeters. And we need to convert the 200 square centimeters into square meters. 10,000 square centimeters make one square meter. What about 200 square centimeters? So again, we, class, uh, we cross multiply, and in this case, we are going to get our area as 0 0.02 square meters. Now that is the largest area. So to get the least pressure, P least, we'll get the force. Remember in the first question we calculated the force, which is now 5 newtons, divided by the area largest or the largest area which is 0 0.02 square meters. So 5 divided by 0 0.02, you end up getting 250 newtons per square meters. You can see clearly that if we use the larger area, we are getting the least pressure. And if we use the maximum or the largest, no, sorry, if we use now the least, area we get the maximum pressure so in that question when you want to in, when you are given such a question you need first to get the possible areas all the possible areas depending with how the brick may rest on a flat surface because it may rest on three different positions as we have seen it can rest on this position this other one or the other one now in those three areas, now you need to choose. If you want to calculate the maximum pressure, you use the smallest area. And if you want to calculate the least pressure, you use the largest area. Now, let's do another question. Now, in this, we are given a block measuring 20 centimeters by 10 centimeters by 4 centimeters and it rests on a flat surface and the block has a weight of 6 newtons. So we are told to determine, number one, the minimum pressure it exerts. We have a block measuring 20 centimeters by 10 centimeters by 4 centimeters. You can see the block 20 by 10 by 4 centimeters. And we have been told that it exerts a weight. It has a weight of 6 newtons. So we are going to calculate first the minimum pressure. Now before even you go to calculating the minimum pressure, we need to get the possible areas. If it rests on this way, in this way, or the other one, or even this other one, what are the areas? In the first case, if it rests this way, we see the area is 20 by 10, which is 200 square centimeters. 
If it rests this other way, we have 10 by 4, which is going to be 40 square centimeters. And if it rests on this other position, we have 20 by 4, that is 80 square centimeters. So we have the three areas, that is 200, 40, and 80 square centimeters. So the pressure minimum is being given by the force F in newtons divided by the largest area. Now, we have our force as 6 newtons and our largest area as 200 square centimeters. So we convert the 200 square centimeters just as we did in the previous question, we convert into square meters by dividing by 10,000. So we are going to have 6 newtons divided by 0 0.02 square meters. And you divide that, you get 300 square meters. And that is the least pressure or the minimum pressure that will be exerted. Now, again, let's move on to the next one, whereby we are told to calculate the maximum pressure that can be exerted. Remember this brick, or this block in our case, the block is resting on a flat surface, and now we are being asked to calculate the maximum pressure it will exert. Maximum pressure is given by force F in newtons, divided by the smallest area. In our case, the smallest area is 40 square centimeters. And therefore, our pressure maximum will be given by force, which is 6 newtons, divided by the smallest area, which is 40 square centimeters. Again, we convert the 40 square centimeters into square meters by dividing by 10,000 since 10,000 square centimeters make one square meter. Again, now we end up getting our pressure minimum, that is the minimum pressure, sorry, the maximum pressure, that's what we are calculating. Our maximum pressure being given by force divided by the minimum area, which will be 6 newtons, divided by 0 0.004 square meters. We end up getting 1,500 newtons per square meters. That will now be the maximum pressure. As you can see again, after calculating the maximum pressure, 1,500, the minimum pressure we had gotten as 300, square, uh, 300 newtons per square meters. Now you can see clearly that the pressure, either the maximum or the minimum pressure, depends on the cross-section area. And as we have seen, the smaller the area, the higher the pressure. And the higher the area, the lower the pressure exerted. Now, that is pressure in solids. During the next lesson, now we are going to move ahead and look at pressure in liquids. Because again, pressure is also exerted in liquids, we are now going to look at pressure in liquids. Thank you. Until we meet next time, my name is Purity Anzelimo.